What was he on about? Mm, nothing. I'll tell you later. You weren't getting any trouble from him? No. How much did he give you? Twenty. That all? It's enough. They make enough out there. to London then? No, I stayed right up here in Teesmark. I had to see the doc, but that didn't take all day. That's the little town you got here. Looks kind of quiet, but the guy can get any damn thing. Yeah, I'll see you. Aces. Oh. Let me see if I can deal myself a hand. Archie. Well? Tell me you love tipping, ain't it? Uh, okay, Archie, okay. Yeah, definitely. I'll get struck. Yeah, he's the tool pusher. It's his job. They come worse. Yeah, escalate on these, you know how. Doesn't smell very interesting. I'd say it was dry as a bone. What did the labs decide then? Oh, they reckon it's just a showing. We'll have to go through another layer of cap rock. That means we're on for some weeks then. I'd better tell Peter Thornton. Press on, eh? The American Secretary of State addressing the English speaking Union oh, in the conference in England. Here, says that there's no reason to fear here, for the solidarity of the Atlantic Alliance. But the price of freedom is still constantly called. Called. Oh, 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 oh. The discoveries we reported, which may vitally affect the future of the British oil industry. Knock it off. The Mogul Oil Company's offshore drilling rig, number one, affectionately known as Kelly's Eye, is believed to have struck oil or gas in the North Sea at a point about 100 miles off the East Coast. No detailed reports are available, but an oil industry expert commenting on the report said that if true, it could vitally affect the economic future of Great Britain. Well, I go to the foot of our chair. Lithuanian school teacher. <laughs> How much longer is it going to be, love? Mr. Thornton should be here. I right want to call now. the London office. Um, who's this? It's someone from the press, Mr. Thornton. If I could just have a word. busy at the moment. And do you want to speak to the rig? I've already been on with the rig. I'm Wells of the news. Hello, Wells of the news. You're coming to bad time. Because of the oil strike? Yeah. It's true, then. Someone told you it's true. It's up to you whether you believe it or not. I can't talk about it. Yeah, but it is. Well, I just heard the news myself. Maybe some rascal about spinning theories. Oh, come on, you're the area manager. If they struck well, that oil, doesn't follow, mate. If a well comes in, only two or three people need know about it, unless there's a blowout. Of course. Have you stopped drilling? We never stop drilling. Excuse me. Hello, Thornton here. Yes, Mr. Stead. Would you wait outside, please? Yes. Yes. Well, I've already been onto the rig. It was a surprise to them too. Huh? Yeah, I'll say that then. Look, Mr. Stead, I was wondering about... Sorry. Yeah. Our paper. Yes, well, I don't know. If I catch a 10.15, I can see about three. Yeah, I'll try that then. Yes, I'll see. Bye. Will they uh, confirm it? Right, not, mate. You're out of luck. sand at 6,500 feet. That's about 4,000 feet above the Permian deposits, which we expected. Well, I've issued a press statement saying it was a very small isolated pocket of no commercial value. 
You brought the North Sea fire? Uh, yes, I've got uh, two copies. And we're going on drilling and ignoring it. How many people know? Well, as few as possible. I told all the drilling crew to keep the trap shut. There's only unfortunately uh, somebody opened there. Quite. And now uh, we've denied it. Oh, yeah. Was there any damn thing we could do? Well, so long as we get complete secrecy from the uh, drilling crew. We're dealing with that. You think you can also deal with television? In what way? Well, they want a uh, sort of sacrificial rabbit to feed to one of their examining stoats in the uh, studio. The managing director doesn't quite uh, fancy the role. We thought it best for you to do it, Brian. Mm. Well, Peter, what's all this about? Well, I don't know, Mr. Stead. I haven't been there for the past few days. I've been up in Glasgow looking over the new barge. What does the tool pusher say? Well, I've been onto him on the ship to shore. We had to be careful, of course, but uh, take it he's quizzed everyone. Sit down. Mm. Who is he? Archie Turner. Trust him? <laughs> We're in the army together. Still is together in the Middle East. He's one of the best tool pushers in the business. He doesn't keep his secure crew. Well, it's not his fault, is it? Anyway, I've told you to put the fear of God into him. That's not enough. I want you to find out who it is, Peter, and tell me. Well, if Archie discovers who's leaking... I want you to discover, Peter. You'd go out to Teesmouth, get on that rig, and cross-examine every man on board. It's a job for a private eye. Archie Turner is captain of that ship, and everybody on it's responsible to him. I can't barge in over his head and suddenly start conducting an inquiry like a Majesty's Flaming Commissioner. Listen, can I? Peter. It's costing the company £8,000 a day to work that rig. I know, I know. Every single thing we find in the borehole is information bought at a very high price. Any man who divulges it is selling out in this, and if he does it once, he'll do it again. I calling T's mouth. Chopper just arrived, Mr. Thornton. Will advise departure over out. This trip out here is a fair cow, I can tell you that. Well, come on the boat then. I'd be seasick for ten hours. You think I'm doing penance or something? I can hardly hear out of my ears. Oh, it's not my idea, you know, coming out here sitting on your neck. I was ordered. I don't mind. You had a stark raving mad at head officer. Well, how's the hole been going? All right. We're putting in casing, going down another hundred. Yeah, when do the crews change? Tomorrow. You? I'll stop another week. What about the petroleum, boys? Reef stays still till his relief comes. This is what you want. What's that? Timetable of what everyone's been doing. We found traces of hydrocarbon on the 27th. We took a core sample on the 29th. That was the beginning of last week. The news report came out on Friday. Well, that means the escape of verbal gas must have happened during those five days. Well, by then, we'd got a negative report. We went on drilling, took another core sample, which was dry. Who came or went? Uh, chopper came on Wednesday, supply boat Thursday. Either one could have taken a message. No, the chopper didn't carry mail. The supply boat didn't dock in time for it to be posted on Friday morning. What about the boat crew? No, they didn't arrive early enough on Friday morning for to told anyone. It must have happened before that. Well, I quizzed the helicopter pilot. It wasn't him. There was three people who went back on Wednesday. Three? Who? One of them was me. You? Yeah, it was a bit awkward, as a matter of fact. I wanted to get home. Oh, why? Well, I was worried about Joan, and you weren't here, so I couldn't tell you. What's the matter with Joan? She took off again. Is she back? She's now. Who'd you leave in charge of the rig? Well, leave two pusher. Was your shift? Yeah. It's true, Archie. I've been cracking you up at head office to be a reliable sort of bloke. Look, I didn't know what else I could do. If you'd have been here, I got oh, you on I the blower. It. Look, yeah. I was at the end of my wits last week, and it would blow up just when this lot was yeah, happening. Don't worry, I'll cover up for you. Who else went ashore? <sighs> Norman Reeves, the research bloke. He had to go to the labs about the oil traces. I spoke to him, he went straight there and back. And the other? Al Stevens, one of the drillers, a Canadian. Did you leave anybody on the rig? Stevens had to go to the doctor. Why? He hurt himself. Thought he might have got a bad strain inside. He's all right, came back with us on Thursday morning. On the boat? Yeah, we met at the dockside, 5.30 Thursday morning. The news is with the agencies by Friday. <sighs> yeah, I know. Looks bad. What do they both say? Well, Reeves had to... Discuss it with the labs, of course, they've been cleared, but apart from that, nothing. Stevenson talked to his doctor, what did he say? Well, he says he went to the company hotel, had a few drinks, and a meal, and went to bed. 
Yeah, well, I'd better talk to him. No reason why he should have talked. I didn't say there was. I mean, he didn't need money or anything like that. Okay, Archie, it's a rotten business, I know, but I'll have to quiz everyone, including Reeves. I feel like a police narc. Anyway, what did you do? Me? I, I went home and stayed home. Had a message from the police the night before to say that Joan had gone off and left the kid. She's done that before, hasn't she? Yeah. Well, the neighbours found him and took him in. How the hell can she do that? Go off and leave a kid at five. I wouldn't stand for it, mate. Look, when I got home, she was back. I tried to talk some sense into her, but it was no good. So I stayed behind and tried to make it up to the kid. Till the morning? Yeah. You didn't tell her anything? No, I wouldn't tell her anything. You can ask her if you like, but you won't find her a very reliable witness. Why does it always have to be us? It's our rig. We struck it. Yes, well, why can't it be one of the white-coated boys in the laboratory, for pity's sake? Or even a couple of executives over the expense account lunch? Expense account lunches are out. <laughs> Don't you believe it. Well, they've checked their end. I've simply got to check mine. Look, I've told Archie. Now, you got the car at the heliport. I took the company car, I dropped Al in town and Archie at his home. Then I drove across country to the laboratory. You can ask them there if you don't believe me. Don't talk wet, cause I believe you, Reeves. No one talked in front of the driver, huh? Is it likely? Look, I'm only doing this for your own protection. I don't think I need protection. I'm not in South Africa. Oh, very funny. That's a kind of damn stupid remark that doesn't help anyone. And who do you want me to help as a scientist? I'm not one of the company's bully boys. I have other standards apart from the standards set by the board. If you're trying to insult me, go right ahead. I'm not trying to insult you, Mr. Thornton. But we're all free, fallible human beings. And there's no particular reason why we should be got at simply because somebody is leaning on somebody else. And he's being leaned on in turn by someone higher up. It's the kind of gaffe anyone could have made anywhere up the firm, even you. In fact, it could have been you, Thornton. Yeah, it could have been, but it wasn't. And what's your alibi? I wasn't here, mate. So good, so when I left the dock, I went straight back to the hotel. Did you have any friends in town? Yeah, sure, I got friends. Blondes, brunettes, most of the shades in between. <laughs> but when you've been standing up on that old drilling platform for 12 hours on a go with one eye on the gauge and one hand on the brake lever, well, you know, you've been a thriller. When you got a strained gun on top of it, you don't feel like stabbing no cookies. <laughs> now, when are you going to get back there next morning and watch that old Kelly go around? Didn't have any drinks in town, huh? Oh, sir. Archie Turner says you did. No, no, no. I don't have any drinks when I'm going back to that drill. Too much can happen. I just waited my seven days off and then... <laughs> you should see me. <laughs> yeah, sorry I can't help you, Mr. Thornton. I'll rest your feet, Al. Yeah, been in the business long? Yeah. Have done any drilling in the States? Built in the Caribbean, visited some of the American fields from Caltech. Ah, you seen some of the Texas fields then, huh? Oh, this is some of the greatest oil patches in the world. Me, I come from Vancouver, but I worked all over. Right through Mexico and points south. Been around, huh? Yeah. Ever been to Canada? Alaska once. Eh? Yeah. You done the trip from uh, Yellowknife down to Fairweather? That's a great trip, huh? Shot in the Rockies. Eh? Yeah. Or caribou? Grizzlies. From an airplane? No, on foot. I got a friend who's got a ranch up in Nevada where you can shoot elk. I like to go up there at the right time of the year. You can get up early in the morning, get yourself a trout for breakfast, and then up in those hills, it's real rugged. You know, most of those Derek men out there were real cowboys. They rode fence. You know what riding fence is? Yeah, we got sheep fences at home. Yeah. yeah, that's right. You know, they come from all over. Well, you know, Archie Turner, quite some time, huh? 20 years? 20 years. Hey, that's quite a spell. Hey, he's a real nice guy. He's the sharpest pusher I met this side of the Atlantic. I didn't reckon too much of working for an English outfit, but he's okay. I like it here. Not too cold after Nevada, huh? Yeah, I don't mind that too much. Yeah, I like to get the old muscles working, huh? Well. Nice to meet you, Mr. Thornton. Oh. Yeah, I've never come across a thing like this before. It's 
Somebody shooting his mouth off over a hole? You getting anywhere? Nope. Didn't think you would have checked them all before. Well, you can't blame them, can you? You ask them, they say no. What else can you do short of putting them in thumb screws? Who's the keen in London? It's dead. Yeah. Well, I've warned them all the places on the line. There won't be any more trouble. Just one thing, Arch. Yeah, what's that? The radio. Anybody been sending private messages? Yeah, nothing went out over that. What about Stevens talking to his stockbroker? Anyone has any private calls, have it with me or my relief in the room, no matter what. You're a right bastard, aren't you? How deep are you now? 850. I remember that old patch in Sumatra? I remember the Tiger Club in Singapore. <laughs> Tiger Bar. Yeah. What about that chinky with the jade and all them pretty girls, eh? I remember smuggling Chinese dollars and tins of baby powder. <laughs> you know, sometimes I wish I was back on top of the Derek Ketchin pipe. Yeah, you're too old for that. Besides, your management material. They've got you on that card at head office. What card? Well, the card they got was all of us, you know, got our names down on it. Your height, date of your birth, colour of your grandmother's hair, they got it all. Even here when you last had a cream tea. And they put on that card your limits. Well, I've reached mine, but you... Well, I wouldn't worry if it wasn't for Brian Stead. No? Well, it's because of him I'm on salary. We're grooming you, he said. Ever since then, I've been going up. That's why I'm here, mate. I'm your boss's man. The whole of the North Sea, or rather the British part of it, was divided up into concession areas. And for months past, several companies have been busy drilling away, but with no sign of any oil, until the reported strike this last week by Mogul's number one rig, Kelly's Eye, which the company has since denied. I have with me Mr. Brian Stead, Director of Operations for the Mogul International Oil Company, and I'm going to ask you, Mr. Stead, to place your hand on your heart and to confirm or deny whether these reports are, in fact, true or false. I don't think you can ever ask an oil man to do that. You don't think this is a matter of public interest? No. Even in view of the enormous difference the discovery of a large oil or gas field would make to this country? No. And Mr. Stead, what are you hiding from us? I'm not hiding anything. Your well is being dug here, isn't it? Yes. Uh, that's very near the datum line between the British and Dutch concessions. That's right. Yes, and the land, or rather the sea along that line, uh, has not yet been allocated to any company. No. So when it comes to the bidding, if you have any secret knowledge of oil there, well, that gives you an unfair advantage over everybody else. Not unfair, fortunate. Even if it means suppressing the truth? It's not suppressing the truth. These reports are our own private information. It's the way the game's played. And how can you be sure of that? After all, it's a big operation. A lot of people must know. We have, every oil company has, a clause in the contracts of all our men, binding them to silence in all these matters. And if somebody spoils your game by breaking it? If we found out that any man had deliberately contravened the security clause, he'd not only be sacked and possibly prosecuted, but no other oil company would ever employ him. And that hasn't happened to anyone in this case? No. But if it did, he wouldn't know what hit him. Thank you, Mr. Stead. Thank you. We shall look forward to further details oh, of course, the North Sea during the next few weeks. Now we must turn our attention to the Far East, where we have had reports. I didn't enjoy that much, I thought. I, I thought he did it rather well. He has a bad taste. He just about got away with it by the skin of Stead's teeth that time. We haven't heard the last of it. What did I tell you? Yes. You had better take this. It's the MP for teas, Martha. Ah. Uh, Oh, do you want me to... Uh, I can't stop it now. Hmm. Well, I'm going to get my head down. I'll catch a chopper back the first light. Why don't you wait for the boat? Oh, no, I don't want to hang around here. I'm not the popular boy. You win. Oh, creepy Reeves for a start. Yeah, he's worried, that's what it is. Well, aren't we all, mate? I'm not worried, Pete. Well, you should be. Hey. What about this Al Stevens? Ah, he's all right. Had any trouble with him? He's all right when he's sober. Why does he drink on the rig? Nobody drinks on my rig. Does he get drunk ashore? Well, I've had to carry him aboard more than once. Want to get rid of him? No, he's a good driller. I can handle him. Was he drunk last week? 
told me he didn't have any. You said that? That's not what he told you. Well, how do you handle it? He said he was feeling crook, so he laid off it. Told me he'd had one or two. Yeah? Well, think, Archie. He told you he had some. He told me he had none. Now, you all met at 5.30 at the dock. Was he stoned or wasn't he? I can't remember. Come on, who are you handing off? You'd know if he'd been drinking or not. Look, like he said, he'd had a few. You were a skinful. Oh, for God's sake, Archie, I know you've got loyalties, and I respect them. I respect you more than anyone. If this cowhand's been talking... I never said he had. No, you don't have to. I've known you long enough. Don't worry, you won't have to put the finger on him. When I go ashore, I'll get some other evidence. You won't be able to prove it. If it comes to that, they'll take my word. You want me to talk to Joe? Won't do any good. Why, she go with other blokes? No, I don't think she's got anybody special. What does she do? I don't know. Takes this dope, I think. Dope? What dope? I don't know. I tried to talk to her, but I'm, I'm not much good at it. She comes back in a terrible state, like a tart in a trance. Have you been to see an analyst? Analyst, no. I'd make her. I don't know what to do. It's the kid I'm worried about. Why, does she bash him? No, no, she doesn't knock him about or anything like that. But the poor little squirt doesn't know whether he's bored, drilled or punched. She doesn't know what she's doing half the time. You want to pack her off to a clinic, mate, as soon as you can. When I'm home, I can watch things, but I don't know what goes on when I'm here. Well, don't worry, I'll look her up and have a word with her. Yeah. Don't worry about the other thing either, I'll handle that. You just keep that drill string turned, eh? Yeah, all right. Good morning, goodness. You want coffee? What? Coffee? There's no sugar. I don't know what you do with sugar. It's serious. Can I have some coffee? There was a phone call for oh. you. Yeah? Who was it? From London, Mr. Stead. What did he say? He said that Mr. Lawson, he's the member. Member of what? Member of Parliament for Teesmouth. He is very interested in reports about you know what. I can guess what that is. Yeah, well, go on. He's going to ask a question. What question? In the house. In the House of Commons? Mm-hmm. That's all we need. Mr. Stead says he expects you to give him a very satisfactory answer. Yeah, well, here's some sugar. Thank you. And he suggests that you get in touch with Frank Hardacre. Who's Frank Hardacre? Alderman Hardacre. He's a big bug up here. What's he do? He's got his finger in just about everything. He's on the council. He's a director of the football club. He runs an estate business and various other things. He owns the cabaret club in town and some others, or in a betting shop. How would he come into this? I don't know. He's a great friend of Mr. Lawson's. Well, I find him. He often comes up the club on Tuesday evenings. What club? Working man's club. Often see him in there on Tuesday. It's his night. You go up there too, do you? In your cloth cap. <laughs> it's fun up there. I can take you up this evening if you like. Yeah, do that. Shall I really? I don't seem to get Archie Turner's home number. Will you get it for me later? We'll do that. Yes, I'll do that. You're lovely. Your town's bigger than I thought it was. There's been a lot of new building. I didn't recognize half of it myself. I had some bad times, though. I couldn't get a job when I left school. My dad was walking about. Well, you'll be walking about yourself if you don't find this character for me. What are you stopping for? This is Archie Turner's house, number 86. Won't be long. She's not in. Mrs. Turner? She's not there. I've been trying to call her since this morning. She hasn't been there all day. This is a little boy. Hello, mate. How are you? All right. That's <laughs> a boy. You know when she'll be back? No. He'll be all right, though. He's with us. She does that. She all right? She may be. She may be not. Well, I'll, uh, I'll leave my business card with you. If she doesn't come back shortly, perhaps she'll call me. Huh? We aren't the phone. Well, I'll leave it with you anyway. The roommate.
Frank Hardacre. Frank be name, Frank be nature. Sit yourself down, both of you. Right. Just as well be comfortable. You're one of the uh, technical geniuses from the oil business, aren't you? At least so I've heard. And I hear most things. Do you? Now, what can I do for you, Mr. Thornton? Hey, hang on a minute. Fill them up again, will you? Same all round. Oh, have you a family, Mr. Thornton, or just a young lady here? I've got a family. They're not here yet. This young lady is my secretary, and I live in a hotel. Ah, you've been wanting to find a house, is that it? You've come for the right man. I've got a... No, uh, not about that. Yes, no. What is it, then? Well, uh, I understand you're interested in leaks. Leaks? Why, leaks? They grow them up here, you know. There's some of them. Oh, oil thing. leaks. Ah. Well, oil is a matter of grave concern to us up here. Including the right honorable Wally Lawson. Uh, it's in his constituency. It'll make a great deal of difference to us if you found any. How would it concern you? Well, this used to be a coal area. There's a lot of coal exporting went on at one time from here. There's hardly any now. So, if we had oil or gas, they'd be a lot more work. Would you? It all helps. Make more loot, huh? Thanks. What exactly do you want to know, Mr. Thornton? I want to know how the rumors start. Rumors? Oh, uh, you mean the rumors about Kelly's eye? I wouldn't know anything about that. Mr. Lawson has come into possession of facts which are supposed to be secret, and my firm seems to think it could come from up here. I was wondering whether you as a well-informed and prominent no, citizen... No, 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 Mr. Thornton. I don't deal in gossip. You deal in quite a number of queer things, or so I'm given to understand. That's my affair, Mr. Thornton. Just like the secrets of the oil rig are yours. I do see some of your fellows from time to time in some of my establishments, but I don't mix with them. I see you've got a reputation to keep up, huh? Or, uh, keep down. Well, we can't all be choir leaders and win the Duke's medal, can we? I've met some tough customers in your trade. Recently? I don't think I can help you, Mr. Thornton. What about your clubs? Any time you want to visit any one of them, you're welcome. They're all above board. I was down in this drilling job once in the Mexican Gulf. I walked into this bar and some young guys were starting up a poker game. They had a lot of money. They were young bachelors like myself, you know, it means enough. Uh, definitely. I said, I sure I could play with you, but I haven't got enough money. But I go get some. They said, you, you do that. Hurry up and get some action. So I went back to the company office and I got over 300 American dollars. And by 4 o'clock in the morning, I ran it up to 1,500 bucks. How about that? Uh, definitely. Hey, hi. Hey, sit down. Have a drink. No, thanks. What do you mean, no thanks? Waiter! Come here often now? Uh, sometimes I do. Here last week? Here, yeah, no. Where'd you get tanked up, then? <laughs> I didn't get tanked up. Archie Turner says you didn't. Oh. Well, if Mr. Turner says that, how can I say the opposite, huh? You don't know anything about this. Uh, no, uh, definitely. Archie said you had a few. Well, maybe I did. Ain't this a free country you got here? You said you didn't. But I never told you I never talked to nobody. How would you know if you were stoned? Look, I don't get that stone. What's the matter? Don't you fancy the color? Well, I don't fancy what you're trying to hang on me. I don't fancy you, and I'm beginning not to fancy that outfit you work for. You said you did. Yeah, well, I said that because of Archie Turner, but I'm not so sure anymore. I'm not so sure about outfits that try to hang things Nobody's on you. Nobody's trying to hang anything on you. Uh, he, he's only come here for a bit of tail. We're with sequins on it. You shut up. Look, is it true, like that man says, that they not only fire you, but they take you to court? What man? Oh, one of those... Big wheelers at the top, the vice president or some character such stature. Is it true they blackball you so you can't work for nobody else? They could do, yeah. Yeah, well, then it's a pretty crummy outfit. 
Yeah, first I have this Archie Turner asking me all kinds of questions. And he comes in here like the district attorney, all full of his tricks. Then I have this big wheeler threatening to, threaten to fire me. You think you got it all figured out, huh? You got some poor dumb cowboy to hang it out. Well, you I only want to make summer. sure there's no more talking, Al. Oh, there's going to be no more talking on that rig. We all know that, don't we, huh? Mm -hmm. The Archie Turner tells us, you tell us. Then his big man in the flannel suit, he tells us. We're just all too scared, like teensy weensy little sheep. Who did you tell, Al? Look, what do you got on that rig you're so ashamed of? You, maybe. Ha! <laughs> Who's your uh, friend? Mm. Oh, well, don't hurt yourself. And how are the big, tough oil men tonight? Big. What were you having words about? Yeah. You were having words? Yeah. Well, what was it about? Well, you come over here, sweetheart, and I'll tell you all about it. Mr. Thornton, what news of the Wells? What? Wells of the news. Whatever is happening in the oil rush in the North Sea is obviously not fit for the public to, to, to hear. The, are the waters shark infested? If so, who are the sharks? One of the men on the rig wanted to know. Well, it's, it's very distressing. The frightened men of the Dogger Bank. Yes, on the other hand, I don't think it's exactly um, actionable. It's ruddy libel. Yes, but unless we can actually prove a sort of foreign detection. It. Get in Mr. Thornton at T's mouth. He might at least have sold it to a decent rag. Well, if it means so much to you, Mr. Thornton, I don't mind telling you. After all, it's no skin off my nose. Well, it was obviously a company man, anyway. All right, well, one of your lads. Didn't tell me, though. He told a friend of mine. He was quite talkative. About the strike? Ah, that's right. About how they found traces of oil and run a log test. Well, you know the rest of it. You passed on to the news. How much did they pay you? They didn't pay me. Oh, I see. It all goes to your friend, Mr. Wells, along with all the other little tidbits in return for publicity when you want it, and no publicity when you want something kept quiet. He was too smart to publish this in the local news first, wasn't he? He syndicated it. You missed your vacation, Mr. Thornton. Of course, the details went to your friend, Mr. Lawson, in Westminster. That'd keep you well in with him, wouldn't it? You know, you shouldn't be wasting your time drilling for oil. I should have thought something more in the front. Did you get but... tacked up in here? No, we went for a night out. What, just the two of you? No, with two lasses. I'm not like that, am I, Lou? No, and you're not that ruddy good, either. Wednesday night? All right, well, Wednesday. Well, fine night. A fine dawn and all when we dropped him off at dock. Who was it, Stevens? No, Mr. Thornton, I'm not going to tell you his name. I phoned the company hotel and spoke to the receptionist, and Mr. Al Stevens did book in there last Wednesday. <laughs> Mogul exploration? Yes, this is Mr. Thornton's office. I see. That's very kind of you. What is the name? Yes, I'll tell him. Goodbye. This is Mr. Turner's neighbour. Who? The woman you spoke to yesterday. She said that if you want to catch Mrs. Turner, you'll have to go straight to the station. Police station? No, the railway station. You know, where the trains go. <laughs> Hello, Peter. What the hell's going on? In what way? I've been phoning you for two days. I haven't been home. Where have you been? Around. Nowhere. Where? Look, why don't you just... Oh, leave me alone.
Archie's been worried sick about you. Did he send you to find me? No. No, he wouldn't. Look at me, will you, and take those ridiculous glasses off. What are you doing to him? I'm leaving. What about the kid? He's with the woman next door. Where are you going? To London. Why? I have friends in London. Everybody's got friends in London. They don't all pack their bags and go. I can't stand any more, Peter. I've got to get away. From what? Oh, the house. Life. <laughs> Everything. Archie, what do you get away from Archie for? He's a good bloke. He loves you and he loves the kid. Why are you going to run out on Archie? Run out? He isn't even there most He can't of help time. that. He's three weeks on the oh. rig, one week back. That's lovely. That's a life. He doesn't complain about it. No, he doesn't complain. He doesn't mind. I mind. I married a man, not a lighthouse keeper. Well, it worked before. Yes, well, I didn't have all this caper. Either I was at the oil camp well, or he was... he was away for a good long stint and you could behave like a tramp and no one had taken any notice. You're a no-hoper, aren't you? Peter, he's a dull man. He's not intelligent like you. He comes back from that flaming rig like a tired dog. He goes to sleep in front of the fire and then he crawls back again. He's dull, dull, he's dull. He's a good bloke. Well, you keep him. I'm finished. Look, I know I've been away. I've been away with other men. I've done a lot of things. But I've always come back and I've tried to explain, but he wouldn't understand. Maybe he's got a point. Well, he walked out on me, Peter. When did he walk out he on you? He just lost his temper When did he ever walk out on you? Wednesday, last Wednesday. Wednesday he was home. He told you that. You were missing. He was worried about the kid. And when he got back, you were there, so he stayed. He did not. He left. When? Oh, God, I can't remember. I In didn't... the evening? Yes, yes, early. We just had this row and he left. He could not understand. Doesn't even try. Oh, God, Peter, I wish he was somebody like you. The train now arriving at number seven platform that's your train, don't let me stop you. for Leeds Central, calling at Middlesbrough and North Allerton. Passengers for London change at Leeds Central. It's gonna blow! Isn't that anything? Just a lot of small pocket. I think the pressure's dropping already. Well, the well's blown, and that's a black eye for the crew. No, it wasn't anyone's fault. The valve wheel jammed. Is that so? Yes. Archie went in and freed it. He was great. Yeah, well, he's still in dead trouble. Oh, don't be an idiot. It wasn't his fault. I don't mean about that. What sort of an alibi can you give him for last Wednesday? He was still on about last week. Yeah. Now, you dropped Al Stevens at the Quacks. And you took uh, Archie home, huh? Yes, and I dropped him too. You didn't see either of them again till the following morning? That's right. What sort of shape was Al Stevens in? Well, he was all right. How cut was he? He wasn't drunk. What, just a hangover? No, he hadn't been drinking. He was fine. Archie said Archie he was... Archie couldn't have told. He was cut. He was paralytic. Archie was? Yes. Some party drove up in a big car and pushed him out. He was well away. Why the hell didn't you tell me? I was too ashamed. Scared. Look, Pete, I've had enough to think about. What happened? We had a blowout. I've never had a rig blow before. It's not your fault. My responsibility. My rig? 
got out of control and she blew. You saved it. I can cover that. I can explain it. It'll be accepted. These guys on head office are all on their back. They're, they're jumpier than ever now. What happened after you left Joan? I walked about. What, all night? Yes. Yeah. I didn't know what to do. I wanted about. I finally ended up at the docks. It's not true, is it? Norman Reeves told you. Yep. Oh, I was just stupid. Got to the stage where I couldn't stay with her. You know how she carries on. I couldn't bear the sight of her. I couldn't stay in the house with her. I had to go out and have a few drinks. You met Frank Hardegger. Is that his name? Frank someone. That's the bloke. Well, I didn't mean to stay out, but... Well, he had this bird with him. And took me out to this big hotel right out on the moor somewhere. And on the way over there, he picked up another bird. A spade. We got to this posh hotel and we had a lot more to drink. A good dinner. I paid for the lot as far as I can remember. Well, this Frankie was a flattering sort of cove and I thought, what the hell? Well, then we went back to his place. And just about everything happened. Look, I didn't care by then. I just didn't care. But I paired off with this white girl, Valerie. I kept confusing her with Joan. I must have told her. Not him? No. No, no, no. It was her. I didn't remember till afterwards. Well, then they drove me straight back to the docks and I forget about it. And then when the news broke, it all came back to me. Should have said. Look, I was hoping it was someone else thinking that the girl Hadn't said anything that perhaps Norman or Al had let it leak no, out. Al Stevens was drunk. I didn't. You let me think it. I never you said let it. Let me think it. You put it in my mind. You didn't contradict it. Oh, God, Pete. I think they were the worst minutes of my life. Worse than under the derrick last night. I was going to tell you, but it had gone too far. You stupid git. Look, I'd had as much as I could stand. I'd had the whole works. I was going to try for a divorce, and I would have done, but for the kid, I couldn't let her have custody of the kid. She won't anymore. Well, at least I know now. Everything happens at once, doesn't it? I've drilled all over the world, Pete. And I've never had any trouble. Tell them that. Yeah, I'll tell them that, don't worry. I can live with an oil well. Why other men live with their wives? Nurse it along. Get to know its moods. Even love it. Yeah, I know. I know. I don't understand women. I understand drilling. The only thing I do know. If you know who it is, it's your duty to tell me. That's what a manager's for. I know who it is, and it won't happen again. Not enough. It's this man's reputation. Your reputation is more important than his, and mine's more important than yours. He saved a blowout. Saved the company a lot of money. Probably saved the rig. That's his job. Mr. Stead, I don't shop my friends. I've known this guy a long time. He's been having family trouble. Look, if I say it's all right, it's all right. I've got his word, you got mine, that's enough. Look, when I was in the sappers... You're not in the bloody sappers now. You may want to be one of the lads, but you're not any longer. You made that choice when you took off your overalls. So I should rat on me mates. If you put your partiality to one man before your job, you're being unfair to the rest of your colleagues and to the firm. Peter. We're all of us torn, most of the time, between public and private loyalties. We have to live with it. I don't want to live with it. I'm in the nutcrackers. Then tell me who it is. You're not going to crucify him. Are you more competent to deal with it than anyone else? Miss Turner. The tool pusher. I'll give you the evidence if you promise not to sack him. I won't need your evidence. Petroleum engineers, drillers, operation managers, tool pushers. These are the cards for all the eligible tool pushers. They've been processed by the personnel computer. Choose who you want. We knew we'd have to replace one of you. Then you can replace me. 
You can't push me. Can't I? Doesn't all go one way, Mr. Stead. Not even in this gold-plated organization. People still have lives. All right. Get me personnel. Are the Turners any children? Boy, Archie's parents are looking after him. Morgan, I'm sending Peter Thornton down with some cards. We're having to replace the tool pusher on Kelly's eye. He's having family trouble. Your people had better look into it. If it can be patched up, you'd better have a shore job here. If not, he might prefer to be posted overseas. He's a good man. Right, thank you. Will that do? 